Spoilers for Breaking Bad Head, so make sure to check that show out before checking this video out. So, I just recently finished Breaking Bad a few weeks ago, and I have to say it is really great. In fact, in my opinion, there actually isn't a single bad episode. Even the worst episodes in the series are still 7 out of 10s. It is an incredible show with a riveting story and great characters. You'd think it would be very difficult to choose a favorite scene, but for me, it's actually not. One of my favorite parts of this entire show is watching the main character, Walter White, slowly reveal his massive ego and go from an overqualified chemistry teacher who has too low self-confidence to reveal his true egotistical nature to an egomaniacal methamphetamine kingpin who will literally poison a child to get what he wants. That's not to say that I think this transformation is cool or moral, but that I think it's a very interesting character study that I've only really seen in one other piece of media, Death Note. And while there are other scenes in the series which I think are actually better, like when Walter comes home and Ozymandias or the crawl space scene, I personally prefer this scene, not just because it's epic, but because it shows just how much Walter's character has developed throughout the show. I'm talking about the ending to Season 5, Episode 15, Granite State. And today, I will be explaining why I love this scene so much. So, let's get started. The scene, like I said, takes place at the end of the second to last episode of Breaking Bad, Granite State. Walter, in the episode before, was forced into hiding because his entire family and the police now know that he's a drug lord and think that he killed Hank. Oh, he also kidnapped his daughter, Holly, but he gives her back, so that's not really relevant to this part. So, in order to escape, he pays off this guy that Saul tells him about, who is able to get him a new life and identity, hiding in a log cabin up in New Hampshire. He ends up staying there for a few months, and his hair even grows back. The disappearer guy comes up every now and then and gives him supplies and talks with him for a few minutes. But one day, eventually, Walter is able to bargain for the guy to stay for an extra hour just because he's so lonely. Now, during this scene, Walter ends up asking the man what he will do with his money once the man finds him dead. The disappearer guy basically says, Do you trust me to give it to your family? And Walter decides no. So, when the guy leaves, he grabs a box and fits all the money he can in it, which he estimates to be about $100,000, and leaves his log cabin for the first time in months, and heads down to the bar where this scene takes place. When Walter gets to the bar, he picks up the phone and calls the school that his son is at, and he pays off a lady to pose as Marie in order to get Walter Jr. to the phone. Once Junior gets to the phone, Walter says hello to him and begs for him to stay quiet and just listen. Walt then goes on to explain how he will be mailing $100,000 to Junior's friend Lewis. He explains that the money is for Junior and the rest of his family, that he wants Junior to take the money and hide it from the authorities. When Walter finishes, he begins breaking down, saying how he wished he could have given his family so much more. But then Junior starts getting angry and starts yelling at his father about how he doesn't want his money and how he killed Uncle Hank. Meanwhile, Walt is denying the claims and begging his son to listen and take the money. Junior then yells one of the saddest lines in the whole series for me. Why don't you just die already? Just die. Before slamming down the phone and hanging up. Walt is now totally and utterly defeated, so he dials the police and asks to be connected to the agent in charge of the Walter White investigation, telling him that it's Walter White who's calling. He then leaves the payphone hanging so the police can track his location. With this main motivation of his gone, he feels he has no choice but to turn himself in. Now, at least the way I see it, Walt's entire reason for beginning his cooking career was to provide for his family. But not in the way you might think. As the way I see it, he did it because providing for his family made him feel masculine. He was, in his own eyes weak if he was unable to provide for his family, so he made sure to do it at all cost. But the way this part of the scene is done makes you almost forget that and think that maybe he really did do this for the good of his family. Maybe he really didn't start out as a bad person. 
that is, until the rest of the scene plays out. Walter sits down at the bar and asks for a whiskey. He sits there drinking it for a few seconds, waiting for the police to get to the bar. Then the bartender starts changing the channel on the TV. And while the guy is scrolling, Walter notices some very familiar people and has the bartender go back a few channels. The people on the news are Gretchen and Elliot, his old business partners that he started a company called Grey Matter Technologies with, the company that he also quit before it took off and became worth billions. He's felt sour towards them ever since, in both secret and in their faces. They've been brought on a talk show to discuss their recent grant to help people addicted to meth, which many people are accusing of being an attempt to distance their affiliation with Walter. Gretchen and Elliot respond to this by saying that Walter barely had anything to do with the company, that his only contribution before leaving was helping them to come up with the company name. Now, this may or not, may not be true, but one thing is for sure. To say the least, this pisses Walt off. Not only have they discredited him on national television, but now they've challenged his ego. He clenches the napkin in his hand, staring up at the TV with a vague glare on his face. Then they move away from the subject, and their interviewers start speaking about how the blue meth that Walt was known for in the drug industry is still being sold. Then he asks the question, is Walter White still out there? To which Gretchen unexpectedly responds, no, he's not. The interviewer looks at her and comments on how sure she sounds. Gretchen then explains what she means. She doesn't know if the person they call Heisenberg is still out there, but she knows that the kind and sweet person she once knew as Walter White is gone. As these words finish, Walter looks away from the screen. His expression is no longer vague. It's determined. He's pissed off and he has one last mission to accomplish. As Walter looks away from the TV, Breaking Bad's main theme kicks in. But it's not just the opening riff, but the complete version. Then we cut to outside as the cops pull up to the bar, loading their weapons and sneaking up to the door. They throw open the door, charging in and telling everyone to put their hands up. As the music grows in intensity, we get a pan shot moving towards the end of the bar as the cops move through it. Finally, as the intro riff plays, Walter's seat slides into the shot, the only trace of him remaining being the napkin and his whiskey glass. Not only does this part of the scene absolutely slap, but it reminds you why Walt really got into this in the first place, his ego. So, yeah, to me this scene perfectly shows how big of a motivator Walt's ego is for him, and how much stronger it became as he became known as Heisenberg. So, anyways, I just wanted to touch on the scene and show why it's my favorite, other than the chilling ending. So, I guess that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.